Well, these inspiring stories really are an inspiration for us physician scientists. So I'm going to welcome Dr. Elias Christodoulou. Um, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. And we're going to hear about arm armoring CAR NK cells with IL-15. So another important immune T cells in our, immune cells in our body. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk today here. It's my first time. Um, and in the next 15 minutes, I will be talking about how we can enhance the, functional the functionality of CAR NK cells uh, with secret L15 against um, acute myeloid leukemia targets. A little bit of background. Um, so AML is a very devastating disease that costs the life of thousands of children every year. So far, the standard of care is intensive chemotherapeutic regimens uh, plus or minus hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, uh, which, of course, um, uh, have a lot of toxicities for children, and sometimes a lot of these patients relapse. So we are in need of more targeted therapies. And CAR T cells, as all the previous speakers uh, mentioned, um, uh, are investigated in clinical trials. So far, CAR T cells uh, have met great success in ALL and are also investigated in AML. Um, so CAR T cells have some um, potential serious side effects like CRS, like cytokine release syndrome, uh, neurotoxicity. And uh, if we um, isolate um, CAR T cells from allogenic donors, uh, there is a risk also for graft versus cause disease. So uh, on the other hand, if we try to get CAR T cells, um, if you generate CAR T cells um, from like in the autologous setting, that's a very challenging thing since these patients receive a lot of chemotherapy. So NK cells um, can uh, solve the safety concerns um, and are investigated also in clinical trials of AML, where they have shown that um, they induce transient remission. However, um, more therapies are needed in order to achieve response. Um, so here's where uh, NK cell modification with uh, chimeric angioreceptor can, can play an important role uh, to, uh, tar to target uh, in a specific way uh, the targets and enhance um, these, those NK cell functionality. So here is the chimeric receptors that we have used in our work. And um, I'm not going to go through the structure of CARS. Previous speakers already uh, mentioned that. But we're using um, a combination of uh, costimulatory receptors, 2B4 or 4MBB, along with the CD3 zeta chain. On the center of the figure, you can see the way we utilize in order to um, ultimately generate CAR and K cells. And we start by um, getting blood from healthy donors, deplete the CD3 cells, and then um, we stimulate the remaining cells with IL-2 and the as called feeder cells, which are K562 modified with membrane-bound R15 and 4-MBB ligand. And eventually, uh, we use replication in COVID and retroviruses in order to insert inside the CAR, um, the, inside the NK cells, uh, the plasmids that encode the CARs. And as you can see here, our hypothesis is that these CAR NK cells will specifically target the IL-3 uh, receptor on, or CD1 to 3 antigen on the surface of AML cells. So we have invested, we, um, we, have, uh, we started with our in vitro uh, part of the experiment, and we saw that the, um, both the 4 mbz and 2B4Z CAR are um, expressed on uh, um, very good levels on the amount on the surface of the cells. And this expression is also stable between different time points of the experiment. Then we investigated the uh, activation of the um, CAR and K cells against uh, CD1 to 3 positive targets, which are the MB411, and CD1 to 3 negative targets, which are, which are the RAGI cells, which is the Burkitt lymphoma cell line. So we saw that, so on the upper half, on the upper half of the figure, you can see the percent change of interferon gamma uh, from the baseline. And as you can see, it's, the percent change is higher uh, in the green and the, uh, in the blue graphs, which is the 4 mbb zeta and 2B4 zeta and co-cultured with MB411. And on the lower part, you can see the cytotoxicity as indicated by the remaining target cell counts after a 72-hour co-culture assay. And uh, interestingly, and that points out the specificity of the CAR is that 
In both of these assays, you can see that with the CD123 negative targets, the RAGI cells, um, we see no difference between current K cells and unmodified cells. So next, um, we, um, um, uh, so next, the experiment is like in the in vivo uh, setting, and uh, we injected mice with MB411 cells, and uh, a week after that, we injected the RNK cells. Um, and as you can see here, the conditions that we used was unmodified cells, 2 before ZINK cells, 4 MB ZINK cells, and we also used control mice that didn't get any treatment. And following uh, the radiance, and we tracked the, ex the expansion of the tumors, we saw an initial response. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot use a pointer, but we saw an in initial response uh, between days 7 to day 10 uh, in the blue curve. However, um, then the curve continued to grow, uh, which indicates that the tumor just expanded again. Um, and it indicates that this uh, effect that we saw, it was only short-lived. Uh, this sort of leave effect also, also um, however, it led to uh, a small but significant uh, prolongation of the survival of the mice in the 2 before ZNK cells compared to all the other conditions. But then we had the question, like, why this effect is short-lived? So what we saw in the peripheral blood of the mice is that a week, um, so starting from a week after the injection of um, uh, the NK cells, and up to three weeks, we saw a declining number of NK cells in the peripheral blood. And we hypothesized that that's the reason that the cells do not persist, and um, they cannot exert the effect. And that's why the tumor grows back. So then the next step was to find a way to solve that. And what we did is um, we engineered our current K cells uh, with transgenic IL-15 in order to locally secrete IL-15 uh, which eventually is transpresented through the IL-15 receptor and will trigger eventually the um, proliferation cascade on the cells, and the cells will survive and expand in vivo. So the introduction of uh, secreted IL-15 did not alter at all the expression of the cars on the surface. As a control, here on the gray uh, bar, you can see cells that secrete IL-15 and are modified also to express a more and marker in order to make us possible um, to detect the transduction of the cells. And on the right side, you can see also um, the verification of IL-15 uh, secretion on the supernatant through ELISA for the IL-15. Uh, interestingly, it was slightly higher uh, in the control condition. So here is a short-term um, cytotoxicity assay, and practically we co-cultured all these NK cells that you see on the right side of the graph um, with MB411 and MON13, which are both AML cell lines that express the CD1 to 3 antigen. On the same time, we use again the Burkitt lymphoma cell line RAGI cells, which are, which are CD1 to 3 negative, and in order to make more apparent uh, the difference between CD1 to 3 positive and CD1 to 3 negative targets, we also engineered CD1 to 3 on RAGI cells. So it's very obvious that the orange uh, curve uh, represents current K cells, 2 before zeta cells, that also secrete IL-15. And in all conditions uh, that are, uh, the targets are CD1 to 3 positive, uh, we see that uh, the percent of the toxicity is higher in all effect or to target ratio starting from 1 to 5 and reaching the 1 to 20. While the condition that had just RAGI cells, no CD1 to 3 targets, you see it's very obvious there is no difference at all. So next, we saw like these effects in the short-term assay, then we wanted to stress our system and um, practically we wanted to do a chronic antigen stimulation assay in which we culture the NK cells and then we stimulated um, leukemia cells every single day for 10 days. Um, and after the every single day, we will look the NK cell counts. We will calculate the cytotoxicity for every specific day. And we also um, wanted to see any phenotypic changes between baseline uh, day one and day 10. So here, you can see this heat map that represents the percent cytotoxicity. So, Every single column represents every day, and every row represents every NK cell condition. So we go from the dark colors, which are zero cytotoxicity, to bright yellow, which is 100%. And 
And as you can see, only the condition that has current K cells plus secreted L15 had sustainable AML killing for uh, at the period of 10 days. So as far as the NK cell counts, here you can see that the gray, which is the secreted L15 alone condition, and the orange, which is the current K cells plus secreted L15 condition, had higher uh, NK cell counts, and the cells seem to survive and expand. But also you see that um, we uh, identified that the gray ones, which is the secreted L15, had higher production of IL15. And here we see higher, like the expansion is better. So um, that indicates that it's a dose-dependent effect. So that's a, a little complicated slide, but practically uh, on baseline, on like after 12 hours of co-culture and on day 10, we identified um, any phenotypic, any possible phenotypic changes on the NK cells. And um, on the right side, you can see the TSNI analysis that um, uh, for unmodified 12, um, unmodified 2 before zeta and 2 before zeta secret L15 um, uh, NK cells. And on the left side, uh, we use the flowsome algorithm in order to generate some different uh, populations. Um, and this heat map represents uh, the relative MFI expression for um, of every different population for every different marker. And what's interesting here is that um, the conditions that didn't have secreted L15, which is the unmodified cells and just single current K cells without any secreted L15, uh, from baseline to day 10, they upregulated a population that uh, has lower levels of activating receptors, which is a, it's very, it's not very obvious, but it's P7 and P12 populations that have lower, not, lower expression of NKP30 and DNM1, which are very important activating receptors for NK cells. Um, so it seems that um, this, um, it seems that, but we didn't see this effect in NK cells that were primed with IL-15. So it means that the IL-15 help the NK cells sustain their activating phenotype, right? Next, um, again, we wanted to um, test these current K cells that secret L15 in vivo. And we followed the same protocol uh, and the same dosing scheme uh, as before. And as you can see, we managed to solve one problem. So. The one problem was the decreased persistence. So we, we saw, we initially, we saw like declining counts. So what happened now is that the conditions that secrete IL-15 had increasing numbers. So from day 14, which is a week after their administration, we saw increasing numbers of these NK cells. And as you can see also here, um, So in the middle, we saw also that the uh, IL-15, um, so this is ELISA for IL-15 in peripheral blood, and we also saw increasing numbers of this cytokine in the, perifer or the peripheral blood of mice. But the problem was that um, these increasing counts of NK cells in the peripheral blood of mice did not convey any survival benefit. In fact, it led to premature death of the mice. So as you can see here, the data, uh, they are from different experiments uh, on the right side for the Kaplan-Meier survival curve. It's different experiments, but it's the same mice, uh, like same NSG mice, same leukemia, and same NK cell, NK cell donor. So uh, we saw that this, um, this modification led to premature death of the mice. So, First conclusion is that the 2 before zeta current K cells, um, we saw that in vitro they were um, very effective. Uh, however, uh, in vivo, because they didn't persist long, they were not as effective. So 2 before zeta current K cells that were engineered to express um, the IL-15, which again, IL-15 is a trophic cytokine of um, NK cells with um, effects similar to IL-2, uh, exhibited better uh, functionality against AML targets in vitro. And not only the cytotoxicity, but also the proliferation part was better. And as you see that the NK cell counts uh, were significantly different 
from cells secreted on 15 and cells that didn't have any cytokine uh, production. Very important is that the phenotype, the activating phenotype of the cells was, was, um, was retained, and uh, IL-15 stimulated carnitine K cells had on the surface like a lot of, uh, of these um, activating receptors that innately help the NK cells target tumors. And um, when, we, when we tried to um, investigate and evaluate these results in mice, we saw that, yes, we have improved persistence, so we solved that, um, and that's nice. However, the mice um, died prematurely. Um, so we saw also that um, these NK cells, uh, they persist in peripheral blood, but also uh, they, they persist in bone marrow, they are in bone marrow, they are in spleen, um, and um, it's not clear to us if it was the production of the IL-15 that led to the death of the mice, uh, or if it was the expansion of the NK cells through IL-15 uh, that led to this um, effect. Um, and it's interesting that in this part we also investigated the peripheral blood of mice for other um, inflammatory mediators like TNF-alpha, and we saw an increased number of TNF-alpha. So in this point, it's, uh, it's unclear uh, what was the real cause of these effects. So I would like to thank all my lab members that have helped me a lot these past two years, and mainly my um, um, PI, Charles Bonifant, for her mentorship for the past two years. Um, and all the collaborating labs, uh, as well as the Emerson Foundation. And thank you very much. I would be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions? Wow. Well, <clears throat> um, it's, it's, it's very uh, cutting edge and very nice, nicely presented. It's, uh, it's really amazing to see all the different ways people are starting to engineer cells. This is yet another way. And uh, Dr. Bonifant, if you're watching, I'll say hello. She got her PhD in the lab next to ours. So um, it was unfortunately that you're not here, but hopefully you're tuning in to see the great job of your uh, uh, presenter here. Um, so you did mention that you saw TNF alpha in the serum. Did you find IL six? Um, and uh, because it's would be interesting if you did, and if you did, have you thought about ways that maybe to um, to get around that and then improve their efficacy? That's a great point. We didn't uh, uh, investigate any IL six, and what happened is that, as in many experiments, people are doing basic science. You know that we didn't expect that finding to happen, but we we had this experiment and we suddenly saw the mice were dying prematurely. So then we started thinking about why this is happening and then we actually, what happened is we, we had all these, uh, like we had these kids and we were trying to see how, because they, they were, it was like a matter of like some days that the mouse started, it was very, very, um, it escalated very quickly. So the mice like started losing weight within like three days and started like dying. And we didn't expect that to be honest, Initially, it's important information, but we literally uh, were able to just identify only the TNF alpha. Uh, so I don't have any evidence of the levels of IL-6 uh, in these mice. Um, to follow up on that, it's, uh, you know, there's been lots of mouse work with other car constructs that would be expected to lead to the production of cytokines. So it would be really surprising if this was cytokine mediated, right? I mean, there, there's l lots of other highly efficacious car products that don't lead to early cell death, and it makes you makes me wonder whether this could be 123 CD123, an on on target toxicity. Um, have you thought about the whether this is that there's some CD123 expressing tissue that was the target? of these NK cells and that this may be an indication that, C, that a, a highly effective and potent CD123 targeted cellular therapy may be problematic from a toxicity perspective. Um, yeah, um, let me just go back. So that's a great point, Pat. Um, the fact that we saw 
this effect in mice that don't have any car, but just secrete alpha 15. Uh, that's an excellent point, but it, because we saw it also in the gray, so you see here the gray curve, it's mice that don't have any car. So okay. that, was the, that was the triggering point that, oh, maybe that's because of the secrete alpha 15. As you can see, the difference between the orange in the survival curve, the orange and the gray one is not that much higher. Um, but that's why we thought that this should be like cytokine mediated. That's a great point. So is IL-15 not produced by CAR T cells, for example, when in the, for the like normal cytokine response to effective cellular therapy? Is IL-15 not produced in that milieu? So IL-15 is not produced by T cells. I think neither NK cells, so, but, but people, that's an excellent point because you, you gave that point about T cells. The difference is when people engineer T cells to secrete IL-15, and there are like papers about it, um, first, they don't see this toxicity. And second, they, for some reason, they saw lower levels of secretion from T cells compared to NK cells. And people actually think that maybe, uh, maybe that's because of the IL-15 receptor alpha, which is uh, kind of like make complexes with IL-15, and then this complex is secreted. And this IL-15 receptor alpha seems to be producing higher numbers for, in NK cells compared to T cells. So you think it's probably a dose effect of IL-15? Yeah, we, we probably think that's it. Very cool. steps going to be? Uh, that's an excellent point. So first, <laughs> first, um, so the progress of this uh, project. We also want to repeat with another ML cell line, just to make sure that it's not like something mediated from the um, particular uh, xenograph model. Uh, however, we have repeated this particular cell line two times. So um, and then we will see if like multiple doses can actually do the job, like do the work, right? I know that, you know, it's not, um, it's costly, and, but maybe that's the, um, maybe that's the uh, um, way to use the current case cells, which, because current case cells are effective, their problem is that they're short-lived. However, this can be a favorable point for on, tum on target of tumor toxicities, right? Um, so the next step is actually do some, um, some type of these experiments to see. Yeah, and especially NK cells would be off the shelf, so I think exactly. the actually, clinical point, yeah. translation would name. be helpful. We have one more question. Sorry, so you actually touched on essentially what I was going to ask there, but um, so you talked about you doing potentially additional doses of these, but could you even see using this almost like an induction for AML? So avoiding all the long-term toxicities associated with like anthracyclines and everything like that, and then using this as induction then followed by more standard chemo or alternative immunotherapies. And, and I don't know if you've looked at those combinations. I haven't looked at these combinations, to be honest. But that's a great point. So thank you very much.